In the first tutorial, we built our car from a cube, but now comes the fun part. This is the tutorial where you're going to learn how to give a drivetrain to your vehicle, powering it with a motor, and adding all of the rigid body and collider bodies to your environment and your vehicle so that it can interact and move around. So sit back and get ready to hopefully learn something. Welcome back to uh, part two of the low poly um, car rigging tutorial. So in the first tutorial, um, I kind of finished, um, oops, finished by showing you how to make this car. Um, I've just kind of gone in and cleaned it up a little bit. So I've put, uh, put everything underneath this car. Uh, I, uh, kind of made my doors a little bit larger, added in these lights, and just, you know, some basic adjustments. If you have any questions on how I did this, please let me know. But the most important thing is um, just kind of getting the hierarchy um, ready. Um, let me move everything down that doesn't matter right now. Let's just only focus on car up here. Um, so what I really want to stress is when you're getting ready to use a motor and create a driving vehicle, um, you want to separate everything from the wheel uh, and in this case the wheel here the center um, cylinder here which is like kind of like the I guess the, the rim and then the spokes here these are all a child of my wheel and that's the way you want to and you want to pull this out from your car body so your car body is gonna have all your other accessories. This has my my main body. This has my you know door handles and lights and stuff like that. And um, these back tires are just left left in here. Anyway, just just showing you how that how that should be set up here to get jumping into this. So we're gonna do two things. We're gonna create uh, connectors, one on one for the front, one for the back, and motors. Uh, one for the front and one for the back and I'm gonna show you how to do this So let's just I'm gonna take away all the tags that you wouldn't have yet Let me get rid of the motor and cylinder So you should be starting at somewhere at this at this step um, You know any any components that you want underneath the wheel and As I said before I have this set up so that I have both my front wheels in one wheel so this is front wheels and I have both my back wheels set up in the back. Now there's obviously other ways to do this where each wheel is independent and then you can do more steering but this is just going to be kind of a basic driving tutorial so maybe we'll do that in the next one. All right, the first things first we need um, are going to be our connectors of which we need two so let's drop these in and oops i didn't get rid of my old connector and we're going to be turning off our car body we don't need to see that for right now cool sorry about that all right so we've got our connectors we want to make sure that they're a child of the wheel so that we can do an a center to parent for the axis we're going to do this on both and then we are going to rotate 90 so that the blue part of this is pointed inward on both of these you'll notice boom okay so that's good pretty much done there um, but then we have to click on both of our connectors and make sure they are a wheel suspension and you're gonna see this giant rod sticking out of the uh, sticking out of it and I just noticed I should have done that first um, because now the blue is sticking out and that's not what I want. I want the blue portion of this to be inward. So, should have had it set to wheel suspension before I started messing with it. Okay, we're set now. And now object A is going to be our car body. So we can click on both of our connectors since it's going to be the same. Car body for object A. For object B, this is going to be your on your front wheel connector. That's going to go right there. On your back wheel connector, make sure it's your, it's your back wheel. 
Okay. Um, so we don't have, we're going to have a red signal there, and that just means that we're going to need to get a tag put on here in the form of a rigid body tag. And now you'll notice this thing drops right into place right there. And we can test this out. Let's turn the car body on. So it's not connected yet. Um, so what we need to do now is on our car body, we're going to turn on a rigid body tag too. You'll notice, oh wait, what the hell's going on there? Well, we need to go back into our connector and make our stiffness way more stiff. And now it's connected to your vehicle and we can dampen this out a little bit so that it doesn't bounce around so much when it hits the ground. Okay, and that might be something that, you know, so it slides around quite a bit that we can adjust in the floor, which is my ground where I added a um, collider body tag. So if I come into simulation, I've got a collider body tag here. And so what we can adjust is these um, collisions inside of here, how much friction do we want and how much bounce, etc. You're gonna wanna have a little bit more friction than usual as this thing starts driving, but anyway, we'll just start with it right there. Okay, so that part's done. Now we need to simulate some motors, of which we're both, we're gonna need two as well. We're gonna drop these under. And the same thing, we wanna make sure that we've parented these to the center. Um, I don't know how I ended up with double there. Okay, and now this is just kind of simple. Um, you're looking to make sure that your vehicle is going to drive forward. So we're gonna pay attention to this blue, the blue arrow and we're gonna rotate these so that we know that the wheels are going to go like this. Um, and then we have to do the same thing. We're gonna select both of these, parent it to the car body for object A. And then individually, we got front wheels, back wheels. Okay. So we're in good shape and nothing's happening because I don't have any torque really on my engine. And so the way we can control this is that we're gonna collect both of our motors and we're gonna jack up our engine torque to something like 200 almost. And away she goes. And my car is riding off into the sunset. Um, and it smooths out over over time. But you'll notice and one of the reasons why it's not extremely smooth is because of these low poly tires. Um, you'll see the edges here. I don't have a lot of segments, so I'm getting a little bit of bounce um, in this car. But uh, oops. But I kind of like it. It kind of has this buggy feel to it, right? Maybe like cartoony, where you'd see a, a car drive like that. You know, this is where in the steering angle you can mess with um, and see how it's not going to work because I have both both my wheels are connected um, as one. So what it does is it it ends up making the rotation huge. I lose my axis center, but that's where if you have four if you have four wheels. So let me make sure I zero this out and get back to. Uh, to normal here. Um, if I have four wheels, if I create it over here, it's a little different. So this this example, I just created four wheels that have the motor and connector, and then my body. Um, if I drop this down. It takes a little more torque to get this guy going. For some reason, I have to probably just have to mess with the settings. But in here, I could um, adjust the angle. So that both, let's say, front tires have a little bit of a um, turn to it, so to speak. Uh, let's see. Didn't do a very good job organizing this because I just did it super quick. But if 
I put my two front tires kind of right near each other and put my connectors, give them the same angle to turn steering. Now they're actually trying to trying to turn. Yeah, it's pretty interesting what it's trying to do. Actually, I don't really understand what it's trying to do. Um, so I have this wheel connector angle at 34 degrees. Let's just go back to zero. And I have this one angled at 34. Go back to zero. I might have to like, if that one's turned that way, it's having a hard time with the stiffness of the, uh, huh. So that might just be the, uh, it might just be inverting the wheels. So let's bring this down a little bit and see. This one's at 17. Oh, it's like wobbling it. That's what it's doing. Oh, okay. So what you can do with the steering angle, it looks like, is you can actually make the wheels. You can, that's kind of cool, actually. You can simulate kind of like a wobbling wheel for some reason if you wanted to do that. Um, it is turning it though to the left as it's doing it. So maybe it's just a matter of just making this a much lower value, something like eight degrees. And it is turning my vehicle, but it is still wobbling. Anyway. Um, I'm still kind of learning this, as you can tell, uh, but I've got my my low poly car driving. That's what I came here to show you. So we could kind of create a fun animation. What I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a camera um, that's going to keep like a fixed distance from this. So let's just start with a camera here, and I'm going to add my target as my car keep that in frame no matter where I go. I'm just gonna add a few things to this, just like, let me grab some low poly trees maybe. Uh, first things first, let's just create a, uh, a plane. Just grab some polygon, some low poly trees here. And I will add them to a cloner. Object is going to be the plane. Not going to align them. Gotta make sure I have my simulation collider body tag here and I'm gonna up my friction. And there it goes off into the sunset. So anyway, I will, uh, I'll show you guys what this, uh, this ends up looking like, and uh, I'll post it at the end of this video. I won't take up much more of your time, but basically got my buggy driving, so I hope this helped you out with, uh, with learning how to make a rig for your low poly vehicle. Thanks for watching.